here and uh i was just in my suit and stuff and and uh it started to lightly drizzle like icy cold drizzle super cold drizzle and i looked over and i could see all this wreck you see it's moved over there right and uh i said i rushed back home put on my my water gear right <laughs> Oh, it's amazing how uh, how the weather can just change. Now look, it's already it's drying up. So I put on my rain gear. Remember, un undo people with a laugh and a smile because life is too short, and uh, you gotta learn to laugh even if you fall flat on your face, <laughs> even if you embarrass or you come across someone who is just obnoxious and everything else and don't let them bring you down don't let the uns on you right because you're a do dow dow help right help but i have an open hand right? help those i'm trying to help the whole aquatic ape society by ushering in a paradigm that should have been accepted a hundred years ago and I'm gonna talk about it in this video. The two key things, right? MSC and Zanclean. MSC and Zanclean. Those two amazing things that basically made the uh, aquatic ape theory, AAT, um, the thing, a new paradigm. And, uh, and it's funny, because one of the guys I'm trying to reach out to, this British guy who's done a lot of papers, and, you know, he put out a paper, say, and uh, you can look on my uh, LinkedIn, right? I actually put it on there. Um, I, was, I was on LinkedIn, and uh, how I found, I actually found it before, but then I saw a guy with this amazing poster, this amazing poster, right? With all of the features, right, of, of us and how, uh, we were basically use the word aquatic specialists and this guy mark i think his name is mark can't think of his last name right now mark mclean mark mclean he's a he's a, just kind of like a homegrown md kind of like you know just a doctor not a paleontologist just a doctor looking in and writing papers <laughs> he's passionate about uh aquatic ape theory and uh he says you know Someone's got to come up with a new paradigm. <laughs> well, I'm here, brother. I'm here to tell you about the new paradigm. I'm here to help you. And do, do, right? Be that, uh, you know, the do uh, serve and help. Well, do's also are the sadu, right? The sadu, live in the do. The sadu are the ones that teach you. The sadu are the ones that inform you. I'm a sadu. I'm the sadu one doubt do. And I've lived a long time. And I have traveled down my epigenetic memories of my DNA with Brock Pierce. Hey Brock, how you doing? Shout out to you, my brother. And I have, I have seen my hand. I have watched, I have gazed at my hand, my open hand, just like this. And I watched it turn into the hand of a hominid, right? Of the Ourobora. This is me. And I looked at my hand. I remember looking at my hand going, this is me. And then my hand would go down even fur. And, it, and actually, it became Shigamatra's paw. And I go, this is me. <laughs> and it kept going. And next thing I knew, I was in this field of green kind of glowy green power stuff is the way I saw it, a like green energy everywhere. And I'm like, 
Where am I? Who, who, what is this? What's going on here? <laughs> I was really shocked to begin with. And then it dawned on me. Oh, I was a primordial juices. I was these, uh, I don't know. I could have been plant. It's like, this is like plant. You know, I was like, ah, this is plant. This is good. So using the ancient medicine of ayahuasca, the same medicine that Shikamatra would gorge on and uh, after fasting and able to put out to, uh, to keep the Ourobora off into the distance of the water, you know, way up there in the distance. Because for hundreds of thousands, millions of years, the Sadhu awoke mammoths knew that we were coming. These little Ourobora. Urubora, the name given to us by these awoke Shadu mammoths who passed enlightenment on to us and us and gave us gave us enlightenment. It's because of them we became aware, right? Buddhas, anyone all come from the sharing of her spirit. And I was that first shared to me. And uh and she was able to travel and see just as I was able to travel. She had powers. I don't have magic powers. I just, you know, just a great storyteller. That's all. <laughs> and she was able to see the, the doom, the Ourobora, us, would provide on society. How we would devour the world. We would devour creatures. We would, you know, we would drive the extinction of her, her species and literally millions of others. So that's for another day. What I want to talk about is MSC and Zanclean. And these two events that ultimately are what made, you know, the Easter Island ape. Now the Easter Island ape has nothing to do with Easter Island, right? The Easter Island is just a symbol, right, of a, of a place that was there, had life, and is no longer there, right? That's the metaphor for Easter Island. So anyone who's like, Easter Island, this idiot's looking for the apes that are on Easter Island. No, it's a metaphor that happened on Easter Island, happened also some, um, started happening some six, uh, five, 0.9 or 6 million years ago off the coast of Somalia, south of Yemen, right of Somalia, south of Lem Yemen, there's an island called Socrates. So, so, S O C O T R A, Socra, Socra Island. And if you look at Socra Island on the Google map, You'll notice there's a bunch of other islands around there, now underwater. Those islands right there, my friend, I like to think of it as called the Isles of Atlantic. The Isles of Atlantic. Because I want you to think of uh, that island right there, the very big one. If you look at it and go south, like, uh, God, it's still cold. I'll keep my thing on. If you go and look at it uh, from a Google map, just type in um, uh, so. Um, Socotra, 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 Yemen. Zoom in on there and imagine that the water was 1,500 meters down. And that's what MSC caused. You see, all the water moves from the Atlantic through the Mediterranean down the um, uh, Suez, uh, the Red Sea. And the Suez Canal, the Red Sea, out of the, the Gulf of Aden, the Gulf of Eden, huh? right there, a little clue left there, Arden, Eden, Gulf of Eden is where Eden was, right? The Gulf of Eden. And uh, right there, flowing right into this island. And uh, when you cut off the Straits of Gibraltar, and a geological event happened, a cause that happened, pressure up there, cut it off. The entire 
the entire Mediterranean pretty much drained, just created these very salty pools of salt. And not only that, it affected the whole Red Sea, the Gulf of Arden, the waters dropped from 1,000 to 2,000 meters. And I want you to imagine what that would have looked like, okay? Let's flip over here. All right, so here it is. That's what it used to be like, right? It used to be like in, in all the water, this was all the Gulf. And as far as you can see, right, you've got deep water and you've got pockets of land. So just imagine that this here, okay, is, is this is like if I was on a satellite, you know, I'm trying to think where we can, uh, where we can uh, here, let's do, let's say this is, all right, so this is Africa here, okay? And right here is is drained out. That's deep water over here. And here, right here, is Socrates, and the peninsula would have been actually connected, right? This area here, this now, this is so uh, this is a Socotra Island. And then down here, you see the little dry areas down in there, okay? <laughs> right down in there. Those little dry areas down in there would have been the Isles of Atlantis, right? The Easter Island, eight Isles, right around there. And this whole area, okay, was kind of dried out and even more so here. And this would be up, this would take us right up the, the Red Sea, right? The Red Sea right up here. So this is the, the flow, flow coming right down here. And, uh, whoo, it's cold. And uh, what happened was when this water, and it would take some time, it was 600,000 years. I don't know how quick, I mean, one of the questions is, is how quick, excuse me, let me fix this here. How quick did this evacuation of water happen, right? How quick was it, right? Um, but it started around six million years ago and it took five million years ago for it to come back, okay? So, um, we gotta greet the sun too. All right, just a reminder, right? The sun's coming up over there. But we're not gonna see it. Undell do, undell do, undell do, undell do, undell do, undell do. Yeah, that's the sunrise here in the heart of Lizette. Right there. Actually, let's flip it over. Undell do, undell do, undell do. There it is. That's all I can see today. The Heartland. Slow walk back. <laughs> it's cold as shit out here. Icy cold. And uh, you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna get cold. I mean I don't catch a cold or anything. So um so for um at least six hundred thousand years, right? So it probably drained took a hundred thousand years, it's probably drained in a hundred thousand years. Say 600, 100,000 years, right? So 100,000 years it drained like that, okay? And um, that seems realistic, 100,000 years. And then, um, so you have 600,000 years before the next major event happens, which was refilling, you know, so it took, let's say 500,000 years, right? So 100,000 years to vacate, 500,000 years for the water to refill up. Because of the heat, it went evaporated pretty quick. So 100,000, 100,000 years ago, right, right to me. And um, so all of these very clever um, hominins, all these hominins went scurrying out, right? Claiming, it's like, wow, smorgasbord, you know, fish and all this stuff, especially around the coastal areas. And um, most of the predators, think about it, they wouldn't want to be out there. Most of the, all the saber tooths and everything else, maybe those adventure out there, but it was, you know, after, you know, uh, you know, um, and uh, they, uh, you know, had all these hominids just being highly successful out there in the in the Gulf of Aden and Red Sea, just living it up, having a party, right? Um, and then five hundred, you know, the and this, you know, and then the party is like a five hundred year fucking buffet, right? Five hundred year buffet. Ooh, all you can fucking eat, seafood right and uh i don't know if you've ever eaten seafood 
But if you got offspring and babies and you're not used to, you know, and, and you're eating seafood, you're not going to gobble that shit down. There's a lot of friggin' bones. I don't know. You're, you're there taking a fucking rock. Have you ever taken a rock to an oyster, right? Trying to crack it open. And it has all the shards and stuff and stuff like that. And uh, have you ever eaten an oyster fast? I made the mistake one time of eating an oyster fast. And oh my God, it was like having a knife stuck in my throat, right? And, um, you know, there are monkeys that dive into the water for optimistic fishing, right? There's monkeys that were secluded. And we're going to visit all, you know, all this. And um, our nose is a diving nose, not a swimming nose, you know. SA, uh, SAT, the stand, uh, the, the Savannah, <laughs> SAT, ape theory, SAT, AAT, right? SAT, SAT thinks uh, we were swimming around, right? No, we were diving in optimistic. And I, and here's the other thing. I grew up in Mallorca right next to Menorca and Ibiza, right? I'm a, I'm a fish. I'm, I grew up as a kid fishing. So I understand, you know, diving in for octopus, diving in for that crab, diving in, diving in, grabbing it and get the fuck out of there because you know, there's a shark around the corner that's going to fucking eat you, right? So you do not want to stay long in the water. It's in and out, grab your food, get the fuck out. That's what you want to do, right? And that's why we have this nose there, you know? And uh, paleoanthropologists <laughs> dive in. Because if I'm diving in and I've got a fucking head full of water, you know, choking and stuff, that shark's gonna eat him and not me, right? He's got it, I don't have it, right? And I've got that nose adapted, which is more turned down, and I'm a more efficient diver and snatcher and grabber. Um, and at the same time, that's, see, that would all be, that'd be man's job, right? Diving in, <laughs> braving the fucking shark and the giant octopus, the squid or whatever the shit was out there. What giant fucking seafood was trying to eat us at back there. Probably wasn't good for us to stay in the water that long, especially if all this water came down and all these fish and things were stuck in these, these, these little areas, right? So uh, it was a dangerous business. What would the, what would the women be doing? Okay. They'd be sticking their feet in the ground like this, deep in the ground. Oh, there is a mollusk. Grab it, right? Big fat baby. They would go over behind a shaded tree, and and if you look at so you know the the how so so um uh Socotra looks like big nice sandy. They scoop out a big thing of sand and put the baby down on its back in the shade, and she would just be so the baby would be here. I'd be, she'd be over there just with her feet just nicely reaching into this mud just this sand just imagine the sand until she finds that big old you know uh muscles big old fat fucking imagine what they were like then it'd have been huge fucking things you know one of them would have fed them for a week and now get it out pull it out of the sand and whack it with a stone and then i got baby baby's lying lying under the under the tree, all hungry, go, eh. oh God, I gotta feed Bab again. And I'd grab this massive muscle that I just smacked with a stone, right? Because I learned how to do that from an ancestor. And I would take the big old muscle and I would chew on it. And I'd make sure there's no little bits. And then I would feed it to the baby. And the baby would be happy. Or it would just make my breath, depends on the age. Eventually the baby would be big enough and, he, and she or he would be following me around looking for little muscles, snack, calling me, you know. And the reason for our long development, like chimpanzee, nothing, there's a lot to learn. Don't step on that, baby, that'll kill you. Watch out for that over there, baby, <laughs> you know. So the babies, you know, there was a lot around that time period. You know, don't do that, <laughs> stay out here, that's slippery. You'll slide in and die over that, baby. And, uh, and all that time, and obviously, you know, hell, we would, uh, you know, to give birth, nice, warm, salty pond, let's get in there. And the cool thing is the salt water saved you from infection and other things that you would have. So if you're giving birth in, a, in, in, the, in giving birth in the, in, the, in the Dead Sea, right? You don't have to worry about any infection. That salt, that super salty water is gonna be very beneficial to healing your body, any rips or any tear. It would hurt though, but the hell, the baby coming out would hurt. So the reason why the baby comes up out of the water 
it's not as SAT, oh, well, the baby can't survive. It just kind of floats and comes up there. Yeah, it's coming up and then, oh, there it is, grab it. And then, then I bite the umbilical cord, right? Hold that baby, put it on the big fat bosom, big fat titties, which we also evolved, right? Lots of, uh, lots of uh, um, subcutaneous stuff there. And that would have been our life, imagine that, for our, these uh, hominids. For 500,000 years, that would have been our, it would have been amazing. And we would have survived. And we would have done amazing and, and, and we would have flourished. And we pretty much owned that, you know, the Red Sea and the, uh, the Gulf of Aden, all that area would have been ours, right? And uh, there was big, then all the, it would actually, uh, over time, you know, it'd become more like this. All the grasses would come in, right? It would go from the other one to kind of like this, you know, like uh, all this would have been what is all the dead and the deep water and the high water navigating around. Cause you couldn't go, that's the sharks were down in there, right? Those are deadly. But if you could find an area high, there's highland right there, right? We're zooming in top. And then this, over time, when all this, eventually the, the, the areas of salt would go and the seeds from the savannas and stuff would come and it would become this grassland. And still there would be d deep areas, danger areas, right? right? Maybe like something like, you know? So, but you can navigate and you could swim from here to there and get over there and, you know, and, and uh, you know, get around. Until um, until that the party stopped, some 5.3 million years. That's what MA stands for, million annuals, million years. And uh, the uh, the Mediterranean basin, which had been emptied out, had been slowly filling over those, you know, uh, since you know. Um, 500, 600,000 years, slowly filling up until it, it, all the ice coming, melting off the uh, the northern ice sheets. Right? It was those big old ice sheets up there, all melting off. Had to go somewhere. Filled up. Filled up, filled up, filled up, filled up, filled up. And the water filled up, filled up, kind of like it does on the river here, like a dam breaking. It broke through the Suez Canal and that whole area. And there would have been just one big rush of water go flying down. The, the Red Sea, right? Just a tidal wave of water that had been building up for hundreds of thousands of years. Just, and all the poor, you know, people that all the, you know, living in the, 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 the Dak Hills and all the people living in the Red Sea, guess what? You were fucked, right? You're all becoming fish food. <laughs> They're getting washed down. I don't think there's any tree. I want you to imagine, you know, imagine, you know, a 200 meter, 200 meter wall of water, 200 meters wall of water. And it's just, it's just going down, just going down on you. There's just no tree nowhere for you to survive unless you're in the Gulf of Aden. And at that point, the mouth opens up, right? And it and it just it, it just comes down and out, so it's only 100 meters. Still, fucking way up there, right? So the further you were out, the better. And you had uh, Socra Island breaking the energy. Remember, I said it was southeast of uh, Socotra Island. So Socotra Island, the water from the from the record we know from the Zanaclean flood went over, but it would have been the break of the water and it would break over and we'd see this water coming and, and, and our ancestors would have been scrambling for the trees and hugging. A lot of them would have died, but some survived. Some of the, those hominin, hominin survived. And at this stage, at this stage of the evolution change, the hominins um, have become homin, homin, hominids, hominids, right? The common ancestor of the chimpanzee and the human, the hominid, hominid. The hominins are the common ancestor 
of the of the of the monkeys and and the uh, and the uh, apes, right? Monkey and ape humming in. Ape and human humming it, humming it, humming it, id, id, d, d, right? And the birth of the hominids were then. And uh, and there would have been all of the water, all of the this would have been broken up. You could still navigate around everything else. And I want you to imagine, okay, I want you to imagine a line, right? Here's Africa. Over here is, is they call this the Goldilocks line right here, right? The Goldilocks line. If you look at the phone, I've got my photo, my thing, my fold, right? I've got, I got my different things at the bottom. So I don't know if you have like your little things if you're watching it on your phone, right? So I've got my camera on the left. I've got my little like type of note here. What can I do here? I don't know. View chat. Okay. I can do some magic here. Oh, cool. I didn't know about this. Oh, cool. All right. I can, oh, I forgot about this. Then I got this stuff here. I can share. I can actually share. All right. And, um, more. Oh, it's going to fuck me up. It's going to fuck up my thing here. Go LinkedIn. All right. What are we going to do? Sharing a post. Post. All right. So I just shared on it. So I want you to think of this line, right? I'm talking about, if you're just joining, I'm talking about the MSC and the Xanax. Zana clean, the cleaning up, Zana clean, right? Zana clean, Zan clean, clean up all of the rubble. And uh, um, and life started to change because the Zana clean flood that happened in 5.33 MA, millions of years, right? Um, millions of annuals. Um, was 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 the was the return of the the waters, and the waters would slowly be filling up all the basins. And you want to think of this of this of this Goldilocks line, right? So you got Easter Island ape, you got Atl the Isles of Atlantis, it, which is the perfect distance, just you know far enough out to keep us there, but close enough when shit hits the fan. If we really 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 needed to, we could get off it and get back to man i'm trying to what color I like that kind of old on there and uh and the reason this is one of the big questions that the anthropologists can't the paleoanthropologists why are there so many hominids and there's only us today of all of the hominids and hominids are upright walking right like one of the things that hominid or, or, or the ability to to uh rock up you know bipedal right the bipedal hominids. The hominids are bipedal um, ancestors of ours, okay? But not all hominids were bipedal, I guess, because some of them were the common of the, of the, of the, of the chimpanzees and the bonobos and the gorillas and the orangutans. So, uh, you know, um, oh, there is the sun. Maybe we see it on the other side. And uh, as the waters would continue to rise, we would, we, it, would, it would be the selective pressure that would push off the, the hominids that were closest to the left, closest to Africa. And as the water rose, it would just be going across, it's rising, okay, these are coming now. And it would take millions of years, right? And that is why we find the, you know, the, the ancestors of the gorilla and Chad and other places, because they would have longer. And these, and these they've had 500,000 years, right, to adapt and be strong and everything. So they came back in force, right? And they, they, they try to make it a go in Africa. But ultimately, you know, Africa is, is just the land of predators. You know, I don't care, you know, um, and it wasn't until we arrived with our with our super javelin right which was a super weapon that we had the ability right to survive
But that took 100,000 years and we cowered on the coast for probably 100,000 years as we, you know, we knew how to live again on the water. And uh, so this is one of the biggest mysteries of paleoanthropology is why, and they can't explain this, right? SAT, the Savannah ape theory, can't explain this, but here the, 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 the Easter Island ape provides you this explanation, or I'm providing it to you, why we have all these hominids. And, uh, and, it, and, and it slowly just kept working, working over, and then about here, right, is when you start seeing the homo species show up. Because the homo species were in the lower islands, right? There would, have, there would have been, if you look at the map, there's actually a high island and there's lower islands, okay? And the lower islands would have been all populated by homo, um, homo uh, uh, erectus, right? Homo erectus, homo habilis, homo sapien. And all the other homos, who were a bunch of homos, would have been God, it's so rainy. Would have been um, just evolution out of the Homo erectus, right? Whatever the first one was, adapting on there. Um, and uh, um, like the Neanderthals would have been, and Homo erectus was very, you know, was you know had very, you know, all, we had very good survival. Went all the way up into. You know, we, we would just follow the water. That's why the journey of man, when they tracked our DNA, they followed the water, right? We have DNA evidence. If you watch the journey of man, read the book about this, uh, this gen geneticist who took gene pool in the, in the 2000, I don't remember what it was, 2005, four, three, whatever, just enough time because of, you know, and it all followed rivers, water, water, rivers, water, because we know we were aquatic apes, something else more evidence, right? Why did the genes follow the rivers? There's a uh, sun over there. It's actually very beautiful. Um, and uh, and that, well, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's how it happened. These two events, MSC right that drained out the mediterranean drained out the red sea drained out the the gulf of um aden eden gulf of eden is where everything happened and then over a course of five million years of it's flooding back up and filling back up created the 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 uh the pressure that pushed all these these hominids and then finally um our ancestor, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo sapiens, right? Finally, we were the last ones back on the land, back to Africa. And, uh, and the tribe, right? At the, la the tribe that arrives is, is, you know, it starts the book of, the book of Tao, the book of Un, Dao do. So the book of Un describes everything up to the arrival, ends with the arrival of the Ourobora tribe, the Ourobora, 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 right? The, the, the alarm call, right? They'll be up there, they'd see something, Ourobora, Ourobora, they'd look around. What is that? What's going on? This is when the, we were uh, monk apes, hominins, right? Uh, Niazine. And, uh, Ultimately, uh, that's what we were referred to by Shigamatra, right? Because that's what we were. And they'd seen the monk apes grow up, and then some of them were, you know, but they knew these ones were special, and these ones were going to rip it all down. On
Now do to you and yours. <laughs> <laughs>